So in this video, I'm gonna go over my newest acquisition. It's a Seiko. It is no secret Seiko is like one of my favorite brands, if not my favorite. But wristwatch check, I'm wearing my Black Bay 58925. Just got it back from warranty service because it wasn't running really well. Uh, but now it's uh, just put on the time grapher, it's running great again. So very happy to have this guy back. Okay, so let's see what we got today. This is the Seiko speed timer. Um, this is like the limited edition speed timer. I think the uh, reference number is SSC909. This is limited to a run of 10,000 units. Uh, this is, I believe, 14, I haven't even, I already kind of looked at it, but it's like 14, I think this one's 1485, I believe, out of 10,000. You know, when I initially saw that they released the speed timers when they actually came out, I wasn't terribly too enthusiastic about it, but the fact, but then they released this one with this new, like, uh, this new kind of like platinum, this Rolex Daytona platinum looking dial. I was like, damn, that looks really cool. A new dial color was enough to get me, to reel me in and actually get, you know, actually be interested in the watch and want to actually buy it. Another good reason was uh, they were asking $700 for this thing. Uh, this is the retail cost. I actually found it on eBay for a little over $500. And it might be for the fact that this watch comes with this polarizing uh, bracelet, which uh, definitely I would agree that it, I, you know, if I were Seiko, I would have just gone with a plain bracelet. But uh, you know, I see what they were going. They were trying to match it up with the with the bezel, with the tachometer bezel here. Uh, yeah, so I removed some of the plastic here to get a better look. It's hard to tell. I mean, you, you would think with the pictures that that the center link of the bracelet it was like a black color, but it's more like a gunmetal gray. And it's, I don't know if it's coming through through the video, but it's not as dark as I thought it was. So, you know, it, may, it doesn't look as bad in person, but uh, I'm still not the biggest fan. This is part of the Seiko Prospects line, considered to be a tool watch. Uh, this is a this tachymeter bezel, which is used for racing applications and stuff. You can just time your, determine how fast the car's going or something. If you just, I, I don't know how to use it. I probably won't even, I'll never, probably never use it in that capacity. Probably never used this watch more than just uh, to uh, time something briefly. This is my third chronograph. Don't really use that function too much. I just like the the look of the three three dial three sub dials. I think it looks cool. Uh, but yeah. Um, so anyway, this is a quartz. This uh, watch is a solar quartz movement. This is the V one nine two. You gotta love quartz. They measure the deviation in plus fifteen seconds per month, as opposed to per day. The subdials are are actually little solar panels. They'll actually collect the light and charge your watch pretty much indefinitely. Another reason why I like this watch has a curved sapphire crystal with an anti-reflective coating. It has Luma Bright on the hands and indexes. Again, this is a stainless steel watch, and it has a nice steel deployment there and push button release, as you can see. So it's a it's a nice little package, and uh, I think even at re even at retail, I think it's well worth the money, even even if. Uh, and it, you know, even though a 10,000 unit limited edition, limited, you know, limited edition watch is, I wouldn't consider that very limited, but uh, it is kind of cool to know that maybe you'll have one of 10,000 out there in the wild. So that's something cool. I mean, not, not all of us can afford one of 200, one of 20, you know, runs of watches. That's just, they're, those are crazy expensive and crazy high end. Let's get a closer look at the dial. I mean, the dial is obviously the star of the show. Um, obviously, you can see the, the left sub dial here. It has the running seconds, and it is uh, obviously that quartz one, one tick per second. You have some applied indices here that are nice and polished. Four, you got Luma 12, 3, 6, and, and 9, and you have obviously Luma right on the hands as well. I think there might be a little bit of Luma on that second, on the chronograph seconds hand. But there you go. Uh, the cool thing about this watch, I believe it had, a, it is like a mechanic mechanic quartz uh, movement. So you do have that mechanical watch looking sweep on that second, on the uh, chronograph seconds hand, which is nice. Uh, it almost make you forget that you have a, that this is a quartz watch. I mean, I'm not really a, an elitist when it comes to mechanic. Uh, I don't, uh, not all my watches need to be mechanical watches. Yes, I do appreciate you know, a nice, you know, mechanical movement and the beautiful and the sweep that accompanies it. But uh, I can appreciate this as well. I think this is really cool. And the fact that this is a no maintenance, set it and forget it kind of watch, I think it's a benefit. So this blue dial is the, I, I would say is the star of the show. Um, 
it is very unique. It does give you the, that vibe of the Platinum Daytona that they make with the brown, yeah, with the brown uh, tachymeter bezel that it has. But this is uh, a really nice uh, option if you're looking for something along those lines, uh, something that gives kind of gives you that look without, um, I mean, that watch is so expensive that Rolex doesn't even list the price on their website. I think once you pass that like 40 to $50,000 mark, uh, they don't even list the price anymore. So if it's sort of, if you have to ask, you can't afford it kind of situation. But with this watch, I believe, like I said, I found if this was a little over $500 on eBay, and I think at the, for that price, this watch is a bargain, especially given that it's like the special edition speed timer. And it really does have that beautiful, like, uh, it really has that beautiful vintage uh, look. So yeah, obviously this is a really cool watch and it's, it harkens back to the design of, the, of their speed timer of the 1960s that Seiko had. And, you know, it's sort of based on that, that design. And it really, it does have that nice, those smaller proportions, uh, be, given that it's like a 39 and a half, uh, a millimeter case uh, so this this watch will fit a lot of people's wrists and it is a very uh, I think it's a I think this is a clear winner for Seiko there you got limited edition Seiko and it's 1485 I believe of 10,000 and you can see that it is a uh, 10 bar water resistance and uh, uh, obviously and this does not have screwed down this is does not have a screw down crown uh, even the pushers are not screwed down uh, and it, it still achieves that 10 bar water resistance. Um, yeah, so it's an overall really cool package for this uh, new Seiko of mine, but I'm not done yet. Let me, I got a, one more thing. The only reason why I bought this watch was the fact that Strap Code put out a bracelet for this watch and, he, and this is the bracelet. So I would not have bought this watch had Strap, strap code would not have a, a replacement bracelet because I not I'm not the biggest fan of this look. It's a little too much for me. Uh, you know, if you like it, that all the more power to you. That's cool. But for me, I wanted something a little more, uh, a little less uh, out there, a little more traditional. So I went and bought this strap code bracelet. But I am not going to be installing it in this video. So please get subscribed, and I'll uh, you'll see it in another video, upcoming video for this uh, for this watch. So please get a, please go ahead and get subscribed. You can kind of get a view of how it's going to look there. I think it's going to look much better with the strap. And I kind of wish Seiko would have just done that from the get go. They could have just used the same the same bracelet from the uh, from the Panda version of this watch. But you know, I guess they wanted to make it special and you know have it have it stand out, and they certainly achieved that. But anyway, this I believe the strap code bracelet's about a hundred, little over a hundred dollars. Um, so if you're interested in it, I'll put a link in the description. And again, please get subscribed so you can get a so you can so you can see the watch with the bracelet and all with the new strap code bracelet. And uh, well, anyway, if you have any questions about the watch, feel free to leave them in the comments. And again, this is like a first look at the watch. I'm probably going to do a more in-depth review later on. If you have any, again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. It'd be really great if you can give this video a like. It really helps with the algorithm. And I'll see you in the next one.